How are our countries addressing the whole issue of firearms, illegal firearms? Um, is that we don't particularly have a lobby in the Caribbean for no firearms. I think that it should be, but maybe people think, I know that in Guyana, we were just talking last night, you know, uh, a lot of, many journalists themselves have firearms. I'm not an advocate of, of that because um, I think that it's not good if you as a journalist become a combatant in a, in a situation. But that, that's another story. Um, we have gender-based violence to look at. You have the, the various um, social interventions and the promotion and way, and this is this is a, a very important point that appears to be a little bit more esoteric, but it is very real, which is the, the recommendation that we promote greater awareness of and respect for human rights. There is not enough of that in our society. Reduce risk and build youth resilience. Control street gangs and organized crime, transform the police, and we know that the whole act of transforming the police um, force or police service, um, there are different interpretations, different ways of looking at that. How do you transform the police service? Um, this whole thing of, of transformation in the police service cost uh, uh, a Canadian police commissioner his job in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, reform the justice system, as I said before. You have these log jams in the system. You have these um, anomalies within the system that need to be addressed. And you need to build a capacity for evidence-based policy. It's in much the same way that yesterday I spoke about the need to build, to, to craft a journalism in the Caribbean that is more evidence-based as opposed to based, being based on anecdotes and intuition and guessing and the zeppo and the rumor and what somebody called and, and told you on the phone. We need to build a stronger um, predisposition to evidence-based journalism. And in the same way that the report calls for greater evidence-based policy in tackling the issues of violence and crime in our societies. But there's a lot of companion information I think that we can add to the um, to the report that would, that can strengthen it. For example, I spoke about, if, if you're talking about confidence in the system, confidence in the ability of our governments to, to transform the, the, the situation, then you also would need to look at what other people are saying about um, confidence in, in our political administrations vis-a-vis -vis corruption. Um, if you look, the, the, the latest transparency, the Corruption Perception Index uh, by Transparency International draws a connection between high levels of in the Corruption Perception Index and lower rates of foreign investment. So the higher the perception of correct corruption, although one might want to think it can be the other way around. And we were talking about Chinese investment in the Caribbean um, this morning and last night. Um, so perhaps we need to look at the story from that aspect as well. But what transparency has done is that they've drawn a connection between the corruption perception index and lower rates of foreign investment. And if you oh, uh, the HDR report um, doesn't cover all 15 Caribbean countries for reasons explained, but the, tra the corruption perception index has all our countries there. And you can go there, I don't know to what extent, um, I think the last report was obvious a few months ago two or three months ago. Um, so it's, it's, it's still pretty fresh. You can go back to it and look at it and try to see what are the connections between the perception of corruption and therefore the level of confidence in the system people have and the way in which the citizen security report looks at the perception of confidence. The higher the CPI, the lower the long-term economic growth as well. So it's not only a connection between the, the perception of corruption and, and higher investment, but growth itself. The, uh, transparency has, has drawn that connection. So if you look at economic growth now, there are some countries represented around the table where um, the statistics fly in the face of what I've just said. Um, and they're smiling, yeah. You don't get into individual countries, but um, 
there is a, a there has been an observation that lower long term economic growth is a function of the perception of, the, of corruption. In Trinidad and Tobago, um, there was an attempt to address that by eliminating, um, removing from the, the, the court system matters that were over um, 10 years old, and the plan that the government did quite a lot of hot water, given the manner in which they, they attempted to have executed, and that's a, a life issue. But what was behind that really was a kind of was action geared to unclogging the judicial system. Because there are love jams, it, I, there's no country represented around the table here in which delays in the judicial system are not a big part of, of the scenario. And, and we don't mean um, unclogging the system by, by murdering the accused or, or set, setting up communities against them so that you can um, remove, get, get rid of, of the alleged criminals. But we're talking about unclogging a judicial system and facilitating a, a, a more efficient system of security, network of security in our countries. And then there is declining confidence in the system. And that's very significant because the declining confidence in the criminal justice system, in the system of state security, is also accompanied by declining confidence in other institutions of the state. And you will find that countries that have declined in complete anarchy and have essentially collapsed, those are some of the features, those are some of the symptoms recognized by political scientists way well in advance to predict that you're going to have the collapse of a state. When all these important institutions of the state um, go into decline, and more importantly, there is a decline in public confidence in the system. I believe in the Caribbean we are at a, a, a crossroads in, in that respect because there is declining confidence in the, in the political and electoral systems. I think that we're going to face a lot of trouble unless there is constitutional reform to address some of these concerns about whether our political system, whether our system of government, whether our parliamentary systems are in fact working for us or against us. And that's going to become a very big issue. If there is declining confidence in the system, then we're facing uh, um, dangers far in excess of, um, you know, of criminal violence. Proximity, again, that's another news value. We have new, something that's new. Um, we also have things, things that happen close to us um, uh, qualify for uh, convert average everyday events from being mere information to news. So proximity is there and you have the countries that are surveyed. That photograph, I, I like it, I don't know how that was done. That's Barbados here. So small. I think what it does is that it forces us to, I don't know how it was achieved, but that, that, that Barbados, so you know what I mean? Look, you know, you know, look how small. And I mean, that's just, that basically is the story of the Caribbean. You know? Small size and vulnerability. You know, the island states among us, and those who are not island states are in low lying coastal areas. And there's a report on the environment in Guyana which suggests, which says very specifically, that the normal, average, everyday activity of the regular Guyanese citizen is going to lead to the destruction of Guyana as, a, as an ecosystem. If you look at George, Georgetown, is, there's no good reason, and sorry, um, Bibi Nazima, the, the, um, you, know, the, that, you know, people who look at this from the outside, and you look at Georgetown, where the majority of the population of Guyana is okay. Gender, there's impact vis-a-vis -vis geography, there's a whole issue of gangs. You know, what are the approaches our countries are using? Are we reporting the attempt to, to uh, introduce anti-gang legislation against the backdrop of what we now know about the development of gangs and how they work? And what are the first few symptoms you recognize um, as being important for diagnosing a case of gang, of, 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 of a gang, of gang culture? emerging. 
everybody knows, everybody uh, here is concerned that there is a rise of, of gas. I listened to uh, Bennett's story yesterday where he spoke about the group of young boys. And, well, you know, Bennett, that's a gang. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> you know, uh, you know, it wasn't known before, you know, for, the young boys used to get together and first they used to pitch marbles and then they started playing cards. Not even on playing cards, not even on pitching marbles. Then they started smoking cigarettes and then they moved to something else. Again, I know that's contentious. I, I'm not an advocate of this. Uh, <laughs> And then different kinds of behaviors emerge, and then they decide, well, look, um, Mr. Roach passes here every day at 3 o'clock, and Mr. Roach is a man who has money. And then they decide that if they organize themselves very well, they can set up a distribution network for whatever. They don't have to be drugs. And they get themselves organized and they become a gang. And that basically are some of the, some of the, the on the ground kind of symptoms you recognize where you see the emergence of gangs. Jamaica was the one we, we, we blamed for um, leading the way years ago in terms of organized crime and, and, and gang, gang activity. And in Trinidad and Tobago, we were saying, boy, here is not Jamaica, huh? that, um, mm -hmm. that whole thing, that, that's not us at all. I came in Barbados here. Well, oh, actually, the, oh, yeah, I, the Barbados, I, I, they'll, they'll never, I mean, they'll, we will never get there, but I, I think that we're there. No, no, there is. If you, yeah. go, on, if you go on my site, yeah. uh, in the search engine, just type in Gangs of yeah. Barbados. There's a story, and I got laughed at until one of the magistrates here actually said, there are gangs in Barbados. I, I, I'm, I'm seeing a entire series of articles on, on gangs, based on how it is reported in, in the, um, this is security report, it's all treated there. Impact. Apart from loss of lives, you know, the other thing that, that makes it the headlines, and I was looking at the front pages of newspapers in Guyana, Jamaica, um, Barbados, Trinidad, this morning, and you'll see that, that uh, in addition to loss of life, and the crime stories are there, and yes, Arthur, the cleaner still holds this principle of attempting to keep um, crime, reporting on crime in the background, as opposed to the observer, which on the front page today they did report um, a murder from yesterday. And of course, on the ground, what reported a murder happened this morning on, on Twitter a short while ago. So, um, so but what, 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 what wrestles with this thing of loss of life is politics. We are, we, we are all so used to, to trailing the politicians wherever they go um, that. There is a tendency to see politics as among the, the huge qualifying factors for news. 